Hello, my name's Roy. I'm a targeted individual, and today I've got a friend of mine uh, with me. His name's Juan, and he's from Tijuana in Mexico. And it's lovely to meet you, Juan. Thanks very much for coming on to say hello. Thank you. Nice to meet you too, Roy. Um, like my friend mentioned, my name is um, Juan Carlos Macias. I'm a target individual from um, Tijuana, Mexico. Originally, I was born in um, La Piedad, Michoacán. Um, when I was around four years old, my family immigrated to the United States, um, the Los Angeles, California area, where I lived most of my life until I got deported unjustly when I was around 23, 24. And coincidentally, ever since I was deported, I became a targeted individual. Um, I have suffered um, very much being a targeted individual from people following me, gaslighting me, trying to ruin my relationships, my jobs. Uh, family slandering me, um, doing me unjustifiably horrible things. Um, I actually have a, a little daughter. She just turned seven years old. Um, um, she's special needs. She's special needs. She's with her mother on the other side. And unfortunately, they, I can't talk to them. They, they rarely let me talk to them. Um, like I mentioned, um, I used to live in uh, Michoacan about a year, less than a year ago. And ever since I moved over here, as soon as I got to the Tijuana airport, uh, my gang stalkers were already waiting for me. And I have a feeling they already knew exactly where I was going to be at. And this is where I'm at right now. Um, I've suffered from direct energy weapons to B2K to gang stalkers following me around everywhere. Um, noise campaigns um, from harassment at work for people just coughing 24 seven everywhere I go. I've suffered a lot of things. Um, I've been, um, I don't know if you can see it, but I have a scar right here in my forehead. Wow. I was actually, I was jumped in a rehab by like 10 people, 10 people because they were trying to do something to me. And I was trying to, I was trying to leave and I was trying to leave because um, I knew they were going to do something to me. And they, they actually beat me up and stuck me in a cage for three months. So my family knew they, they visited me there. They didn't care, which is that's totally illegal and against human rights violations but that's another story um like i mentioned i actually work for a, a, a american company finance company it's called american first finance i work for them um i i basically just help people submit their applications and get them approved or not but i actually have a job i work five days a week 10 hours a day i usually don't talk to many people because i know that usually if i talk to somebody and it's too good to be true especially for me it's usually trying to set me up or slander me or just set me up for an emotional fall where I yeah. fall into spiral into a negative state where I don't want to talk to nobody. I want to be in bed. I don't want to see nobody. I don't barely want to eat. Um, in less than a year since I've been here, I actually now have high blood pressure. And I think I think I might have diabetes and I'm only 30 years old. And I'm only 30 years old. So I went to see a doctor and the doctor told me that that is not right, that you should go see a specialist because you're too young to be having those two problems. And like I mentioned, I've, I've suffered so much. Um, part of my, my high blood pressure is the direct energy weapons when they speed up my heart. Or um, I don't know if you know this, but on your stomach, you have actually have cells that are like your brain cells that actually have emotions. So when the, you could say like, um, when people say, oh, I have a bad feeling in my gut that something's gonna happen. Well, that's the same feeling that they use to get you to be scared to just induce a little more trauma, a little more trauma. I'm to the point where my post-traumatic stress disorder is through the roof, where you can just make a loud bang and I'm going to jump and my heart's going to speed up and it's going to raise my blood pressure. So that's what they do to me now. But they still follow me around from home to work, from work to home. So that's never going to stop. So. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to go into do, a little more detail. Do your detail. family believe you won? <laughs> no. Um, my family knows about it. They know it's true. They just, they're perps. They they all turn against me. And nobody, if I tell them right now, hey, um, they're following me around, they'll be like, oh, you're on drugs again. And I'll be like, what? Like, you know, I don't do drugs. You know, I don't do nothing. I occasionally drink here and there. But that wouldn't be enough to make me be delusional to thinking people are following me everywhere. Because a drunk person, when you're drunk, you, your inhibitions are lowered. You're not even paying attention to what's going on. A drunk person wouldn't notice that. But I do. I notice everything. I notice the cars, the people. Um, just uh, I think it was two days ago after I got off work, I stopped by the store 
the, the grocery store to buy something. And as, as soon as I walked in, the, the lady behind the counter was looking at me real nasty. And I, I went to go pay my stuff and she was just looking at me real ugly and I was paying my stuff and she saw like, And I felt like, wow, like I've rarely come to this place. I, and when I usually do, I come around the nighttime and it's just for less than two, three minutes, I'm in and out for them to be looking at me like that. And something, somebody must've told them something. Um, just today in the morning and I woke up, I had a, a, a phone call missed, a missed phone call from a number that area code was 663, where that's, his, that's Tijuana. So I was like, who's calling me from 663 area code? And I, I called them back and they're all like, hey, you know who this is? And I was like, no, I don't know who you are. They're all like, oh, well, I just wanted to call you to see how you're doing. But they're all like, hold up, hold up. I'm going to switch the phone so you know who I am. And they took forever. So I they put me on hold. So I knew they were doing something fishy. So I just hung up and I blocked them. As I, soon as I blocked them, you're not going to believe me, but I swear this is the truth of all God. As soon as I blocked them on my messenger and Facebook messenger, somebody added me to a child pornography group. Like oh. a group, all nothing but that. So what I tried to do is as soon as I seen it, I seen that it was all um, Mexican people. So I was like, oh, I already knew it's them. It's them. They're trying to make me look bad. I went and I clicked on the little dot in the corner, the left corner, mm -hmm. on the right corner to see if I could report it. But it only gave me the option to report a technical problem. So I was like, oh, and it didn't tell me who added me. So I was like, you know what? I told um, a Christian friend that I have on Messenger. I told her, hey, well, somebody just added me to this. And, and they did it right after I blocked this person that called me. And they're all like, well, just ignore it and don't look at it. Just erase it. And I, I just deleted it and I removed myself from the group. But these are the kind of things that I go through to, to the point where I can't even read my Bible. I have my, in my backpack, I have a Mormon Bible. I can show it to you. Like on my backpack, on my backpack right here, I always keep a Bible with me because um, I'm not necessarily Mormon, but I talk to some Mormons and I, 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 like the, I like the faith and all that. So I have a Mormon Bible, as you can see. Okay. And um, when I try to read my Bible or anything like that, anything that has to do with me being positive or me meditating and just finding that little piece, they'll hit the walls or they'll make noise or or um, I have an app, an application on my phone that's to read by the Bible and you can listen to an audio or they'll stop my audio. They do so many things to me. Um, my phone is cloned. My phone is cloned. So everywhere I go. Sometimes I turn on the location and it shows that I'm somewhere totally different. I was like, what? I don't even know where that is. And it shows my location as over there. So I know they're following me everywhere I go. And sometimes they slip up and show me their locations. But um, what it means is that is your phone cloned? Is you, if your phone is cloned, that means that their IME, their everything on that phone is the same as yours. So they could do something on that phone and it'll make it seem like I did it. So right. that's how they all slandering me and gaslighting me. He's doing this, he's doing that. I don't even talk to nobody. I, I, I particularly just avoid people just to not seek no a negative attention because they give me the most negative attention they want. But like I mentioned, like I go through this on a daily basis. It's been almost um, six years. Like right now I'm short of breath. Like I'm short of breath. Like, and this is how they put me. They put me in a state where I feel like I'm going to already either get killed by somebody or, or I'm just going to die like of a heart attack because they're always trying to induce some type of sickness or something. But if you have any questions, I'm, I'm like I mentioned, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to go in a little more detail about anything you have. Okay. So, so you said you believe you've been on the program for six years now, Juan? Yes, I know it's been six years because um, when I first noticed it, this is the reason my family says I was on drugs because when they, when I first became a target individual, I was on crystal meth. Okay. I was on crystal meth, and that happened because um, I got deported unjustifiably. When I got deported, my daughter, she wasn't even a year old and she had an oxygen tank and my little girl was little and me and the, the mother of my child were starting to like drift away from each other. Yeah. And she's the love of my life. I, I would do anything for her, for them. Like that hurt me so much that I ended up like in, in a negative state. And yeah. we all know target individuals are, are monitored by psychologists and psychiatrists that know psychology. So they yeah. seen that I was a negative person that if they, if I get in a certain move that I go into a certain spiral. So that's what they did to me. They're like, well, he's the type of person that you get him mad. He's going to do something negative. He's just going to say, screw the world. Let me do this. I don't care what nobody says. And that's the type of person that I was. And I was on crystal meth for three long years. I've never, wow. never had a problem with no drugs on the other side, you know, until I got over here. But 
like I mentioned, I noticed that I was being watched through a window where I lived at because I can hear them talking. I could always hear them talking and I will always look and see people move out the window, but I wouldn't pay attention to them. I was like, whatever, because I didn't know what it was. I only I only started knowing what a target individual was about like a little over two years ago, where I actually heard the term and I, I looked it up and it, I found people that were saying, well, I got people following me. I got people doing this. I got people doing that. And I was like, what? Like, that's exactly what I've been telling my family this whole time. But if I show them, they're going to be like, oh, they're on drugs too. So I already know that there's no point in trying to reach them anymore. There's no point in trying to seek help because I've told my family the truth since the beginning. I've done so many good things just to try to clear my name, just to make nobody else look bad, drag nobody else into this. I tried everything I can, but they don't care. They're always going to slander me. They're always going to make me out to be the worst. I've called the FBI. I've called everybody. They don't care. They don't care. So um, like they're, um, they were claiming me to be some type of criminal. So I called the people, the, the police and said, I did it. I'm going to see if I'm such a criminal, I'm going to call them and I'm going to say, I did it. See what they do. You know what they did? Nothing. They did nothing. They didn't investigate. They did nothing. Nobody's ever contacted me. I, they have my name. They have everything about me. They know who's my family. Nothing ever happened. So I was like, okay, fine. That's fine. But I don't, I'm at to the point where I don't know who can I talk to or how can I do something to just to get away from all this. Like it, it makes no sense. Like I know it's the government. It was, um, one time I, my, my family slipped up. And they were trying to lock me up in a rehab and they used the word he's not right in his head anymore because he's a psychopath. And ever since they said that, I would thought to myself, well, I've never gone to a psychologist. I've never been actually diagnosed as nothing. So why would he of all people say that only a psychologist or, or somebody like that could tell you that somebody's a psychopath. So that is something that, um, that I know that they've been talking to people. My family's been talking to people that are from the government because that's the only way they would know something like that. But still, you know, I don't hurt nobody. I keep to myself. I go, I, don't, I mean, I was going to say I go to school. I go to work. Like I mentioned, I, if I was such a crazy person, I wouldn't be able to work in a financing company doing computer, talking to clients all day, you know? And that's something that how, I do. How is day. work? Do you have friends at work, Juan? I deep in my heart, I want to say they're my friends. Like they wow. have people I talk to, people I laugh with. Yeah. But I've suffered so much and been um, betrayed so, by so many people that I let my guard down around that in the back of my head, I, I don't consider them friends. Like I just, uh, well, they're associates. They're, they're my colleagues from work. They're, you know, yeah. but there's certain people that I wish I could say, well, that's my friend. If I died today, if I died today, at least I could say that was my friend. But right. I don't know. Do you have a life outside of work and and this? No. 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 My life is in shambles. Um, the water leaks through my windows where I live at. The air comes in through my... Um, the only thing that I have that I could say it's my life are these little guys. The only thing that I could say it's my life are these little guys. Oh, how beautiful. Yeah, so... Oh, you're lucky. Beautiful. Yeah, so the only thing I could say that I have to look forward to when I get home is seeing them jump around happy to see me because nobody else is happy to see me anytime, you know? So that is something that... I, I mean, it's just my dogs, but I love my dogs so much, so... I can see you've got a good heart, Well, Oh, I've always had a good heart. Um, there was a time when I thought they were going to actually kill me, kill me. So what I did is that I was like, well, if they're going to kill me, I got this in my house. I got this in my house. Well, let me, I like this person. I'm going to give them this. Here, you can have this too. And that's how, that's how the sad reality is that I've gone to the point where I really thought they were going to kill me. So I started giving away my stuff. Like here, well, if they kill yeah. me, people, people I don't like are going to keep my stuff. So I'd rather give it to people I like. And that's, yeah. that's the person I am. How long has like, the V2K been going on for one? Um, the six years, six years. Um, that lady, I already know her tactics. Um, what she does is she she tells me a certain word to trigger a certain trauma or memory or something that I don't want to think about right. to just get my thing up. And then once I start thinking about that, they start saying the word again and again and again. So I get so I try to enter into a, a panic attack. Right. I was actually diagnosed with diabetes and high blood pressure as well, Ron. 
and I actually lost about 15 kilos and um, I, I haven't got high blood pressure anymore and I haven't got diabetes anymore. Okay. Yeah, well, um, well, I don't know how to control the high blood pressure, but I know that um, with diabetes, you can actually live a pretty long and normal long life. It's just about um, watching your diet, doing exercise and taking your medications, certain things like that. But um, it's just, it's been less than a year since I've been here. And before I left Michoacan, I actually got, I went to the doctor, my, had, my blood pressure was not high. I did not have diabetes. I have nothing. And now when I'm here in less than a year, I'm that messed up in less than a year. So it's, it's everything that's happened since I've been here. Don't get me wrong. I suffered over there a lot. That's why I left. Because I figured it, I'd rather be alone and still suffer than be with the people that I are supposed to love me and suffer. So I'd rather be alone and suffer by myself. Like I don't feel that that's anything for me to do. So I left. I left and I came here. I came here because I was going to be seeing my daughter um, every two weeks, but I only saw her April last year for that one week, and I've never seen her again. And there, her mother stopped, stopped talking to me. All the, the, all the promises she made, there were lies. There were just another way to coerce me to come over here. And it's just, it's been, it's been hell. I, I've actually told them like, hey, you know, like, why'd you do this to me? And they're like, well, if you don't want to be there, go back. And they know well that I can't go back because there's no going back over that place. It was the same thing being there, being here. Right. So it, I can't go back to that place with my family over there in Michoacan because it, they're, they're, something's going to happen to me. Be, but it doesn't matter because something's going to happen to me regardless, no matter where I'm at. So uh, I'd just rather be by myself and tough it out and hope for the best. I, I I I think I think you'll you'll be okay, one, you know, because a lot of TIs can't work. So I, I I think you're in quite a good position if you can manage to work. You've got your own roof over your head. You've got your your three little dogs there. I think you're doing all right. Nah, what I got not to to be ungrateful, but they only let me work just so, so they could see like, well, he's doing okay. He's doing all right. And then this apartment, I don't want to be here. I wanted to move a long time ago, but I was renting the apartment downstairs and the lady who rents the apartment downstairs, she robbed me of a thousand dollar deposit. So uh, that's a thousand dollars. Like she, she robbed it for me and she never gave it back. And last time I seen her, she came back with some thugs in the car just to get some stuff out just to, so I wouldn't tell her or try to do nothing to her because they knew that I was really mad that she stole my money because I was nothing but good to that lady. I, I've never, I was never bad to that lady. And for her to do something like that to me and just, just try to play me for a fool, I thought that it was really, really wrong of her. And um, she came back that same day that this neighbor on this side moved out, she came back too, but she came with some thugs to protect her. So I wouldn't do nothing to her. And she, and I seen her and she seen me and she just stood quiet. And she tried to tell me something, but I just ignored her and I just kept going because I knew if I talked to her, I'm going to get mad. I'm going to say something. I was like, just avoid it. Just avoid it. They're going to yeah. find a way to on you. If, you. if you're the aggressor, they're going to call a cop on you and use it as a reason to try to lock you up and try to do something to you. Just don't do it. Keep going. And that's what I did. So, um, Do you document everything, one? I actually have a YouTube channel. My um, YouTube channel is called Targeted for Justice Individuals on YouTube. Um, I can okay. send you a link later. Yeah, yeah if you just, send me a link, I'll put that in the link when I upload this. Yeah, it's called Justice for Targeted Individuals. It's on YouTube. That's exactly the name. It's going to be Justice, the number four, and then Targeted Individuals. Oh, and that's fabulous. My YouTube, yeah, that's my that's my YouTube channel. I try to. I haven't actually uploaded anything new um, recently, maybe like uh, two, three weeks ago, maybe. But um, I actually have videos of where I talk and I talk about my experience. There's one where I'm actually crying because... I couldn't take it no more, but yeah. um, I'm trying. I'm trying my best. Um, people you seem like you're doing okay, one. Yeah, I'm great. I can tell you, I'm I'm great. If nobody bothers me, they just let me be. I don't do nothing to nobody. I go to work. I come home, but they're not gonna leave me alone. They they, they either want me to blow up because my V2K has told me many times, do this, do that, kill this person. Yeah. Don't let them tell you. That. You know, like you know who you are. You yeah. do this. You're like, they've told me so many things. And it's crazy that the people believe it. So I was like, it doesn't matter what I say, 
even if I say I don't do it, even if I say I do do it, you're going to, yeah. um, person who hears it is going to make up their own mind based off what they hear. So I has gotten to the point where I'm just like, I don't care what nobody thinks of me. I'm just going to go home, come home and just do me, just yeah. go to work, buy my stuff, buy my food. Like right now, I don't even have gas, like my gas right now. And I've been like that for almost three days and, and it's just like, it's terrible. But like I mentioned, I'm, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to maintain. Um, we're we're all behind you, mate. I'm behind you a hundred percent all the time. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's just hard. We with do. People. We, we have a chat show on a Sunday one, and there's oh. normally between ten and twenty people, and you know it's a little community, and we just get together on a Sunday, and just to say hello. That sounds you great. Know, because it's usually- people that can relate to each other one. Yeah, I'm actually looking to like uh, meet more people and like spread my story and hear new stories because um, there's always somebody who knows a little something more than I didn't know, or you know, I might know something that exactly. somebody else did. Yeah, so it's always good to um, network with TIs and just find out a little more about um, each individual story because not every TI is targeted the same. Some people don't have v 2 k some people don't have gang stalkers, some people just have the um, direct energy weapons, and it's just different um, forms of targeting. Yeah, and like you said, there's a lot of perpetrators as well, isn't there? So in yeah, the community. And that's, so that's kind of what like, um, but that's actually the best tactic they use to keep us isolated. You know, it's because exactly. you're a good person and you and they're not a perp on the back of our heads for all the trauma we've been through. We instinctive instinctively, we don't trust that person. Like, yeah. no, I'm not, I'm not a person, even though that person could be the best person for you at that moment. All the trauma you've been through will not let you get open, or get close or open up to that person because it's 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 terrifying that like we're always trying to protect ourselves. So by trying to protect ourselves, we actually isolate ourselves, which is actually exactly what they want. So we're feeding right exactly. into Exactly. But I think after a while, there are people in the TI community that I trust. You yeah, know, definitely. but, but I'm, uh, I'm in England. And, you know, there's so many TIs, a lot in the States. There's quite a few in the UK. Um, they're Japan. They're in the, they're, there's a lot in, the, in Europe as well. You know, so it's it's a pretty wide program. Yeah, there really is. Um, it's just that um, I feel that sometimes there's a couple of TIs that are real TIs, and they're like they're so desperate to get off the program yeah. that if if perps contact them and tell them, well, if you can do this to this person, and we'll we'll get you off the program, and they get lied to and slandered, and they'll do certain things just to mess with us. And they don't get off the program. Like I try to tell people, like I've never heard of nobody, nobody ever get off this program. Like it's it's just something. You I, I, I think I think you can get a reprieve because I heard voices for about twenty seven years, and then the voices started graduating off. But I still get the DEW because I get severe headaches, but they yeah. broke my inner ear bones as well. So I have a constant clicking. But it's, you know, I th- there are a few people, I believe, that, that, that like, like um, Dr. Matthew Aaron, he, he, he was um, a neuroscientist uh, and he was on the programme. But I believe at the moment they've given him a job and he's being a good boy. So, you know, I think he's off the programme temporarily. But I think, like you said, I think it's only a temporary thing. No, it's not. It's not a temporary thing for me. They, I've actually gone at least six months without them following me or bugging me or doing nothing to me. I had lived a perfect life for six months, but right. it, it's what they made me um, think. They were always there. They were always watching me, just that they yeah. didn't interrupt nothing. Yeah. Just to it gets to the point where they do that. So if you move to a new location and they don't follow you, but they're there, you're gonna think, "Wow, I'm free. I finally, I finally, I'm ditched them. I, I, I escaped from them. I'm finally free." And you start doing your life again, and then, bam, they snatch you back in to the yeah. program, and it's exactly the same thing that I just mentioned. You're gonna go into a downward spiral because that shock of you being finally free and then bringing you back into hell, it's mm-hmm. traumatizing. 
traumatized. And it's all psychology. It's just to make you break down your mentality to a point where you're just desperate. You don't know what to do. They want you. They want us to kill people. They want us to do something crazy. They, 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 it's insane. It's insane. I can't believe this is actually a government program. Like it's insane. Like mm-hmm. it's secret. Watch this program. Like it's insane. They either want us to get killed, to die from illness, to kill somebody. Um, I don't know if you remember. Um, there's this guy called what was his name? Something Maze. He was a black African American. Oh, and, Myron. Uh, Myron Maze. Well, he 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 was a yeah. lawyer. We're lawyer yeah. he was uh, he was great in his field and he was speaking about everything that they would not leave him alone and if i know he was a real ti so if he was a real ti there was government officials watching him they knew he yeah. was going to go shoot up university they didn't stop it and they let it happen because that's what they do they create active shooters they create us to be monsters they, they create us to be the worst and the worst mm. and that's what they want us to do if they don't if it gets to a point where if we do something that jeopardizes them, they either want to kill us by literally killing us or just by inducing heart attacks or strokes and stuff like that, just making us sick to a point where, or just locking us up in, in mental institutions where we can't do nothing. Mm-hmm. That's what they do. So so um, you, you're going to continue working and we, we, we'll have to keep in contact and um, send me your, your, the, the, the name of your website, a link to it. I'll put that up on the YouTube channel. And uh, is there anything you would like to ask one? Not in particular. No? I mean, well, no. what I'll do is on Sunday, I'll send you a link for TI Talk. And if you're available on Sunday, and then you can come along and um, meet, meet some of the rest of the gang. Yeah, I would actually love that, but um, I actually work on Sundays. I work on Sundays from 9 a.m. until 7 p.m. Right, so the, you're eight hours behind. So, all uh, right, well, we'll have to do it another time because we normally start at 7.30 UK time, which is uh, 11.45 a.m. your time. Yeah, so, but I know there's another couple of people that are doing it as well anyway, so. Yeah, but we've got a lot of American friends out there, one. Yeah, I know. I'm actually right next to the border of the California, um, uh, Mexico border. Right. I'm right next to the border. And um, then she's like, I I I try not to be like too, too descriptive on what I say because they hate when I actually try try to make it a little too detailed because it makes them look bad because it makes me look smart. You know what I mean? They're always trying to make me look like uh, the worst worst of monsters like but they know I'm pretty smart because uh, I've actually I didn't study it too too well but I studied uh, psychology and sociology and that's something that's always um, interested me psychology and stuff like that. So I understand a lot about their techniques that they do to me and what they're trying to do. And I'm always trying to figure out a way, like, because there's there's good psychology and there's bad psychology. You know, there's psychology that actually help you and all they're doing is dark psychology. That's all they do to manipulate. It's narcissistic, sadistic. It's just to make us feel in pain and they love watching us hurt. They love that. And if we complain, they're just gonna dismiss us as crazy or you're on drugs just another form of gaslighting and that's just another form to hurt you mentally like oh my god i told the person that i thought was gonna actually understand what i'm saying and they d- dismissed me as crazy and that in itself will just make you go into a downward spiral but yeah i think that's a topic for another day but yeah yeah I've actually did you uh, did the, uh, did you ever get into the mental health system yes they actually right. mentioned that they actually locked me up in rehabs a couple of times. The last time they locked me up was illegally because I wasn't on drugs. I wasn't doing nothing. Um, and I only had, I only got drunk one time at a party and some, one of my family members offered me drugs and I, I got mad and I broke a window and they locked me up. Mm. So that's another thing that they do, you know? Just oh no, I reason. say that because most TIs have been falsely diagnosed. Yeah. That's what they they always do that. It's just another way to um, how can I say the just to have us sedated on drugs just so they could do whatever they want yeah. to do on us. Just keep yeah, them there. Exactly. 
Any well. final words, Bob? Uh, I love you all. Take care. Much appreciated. Really nice to have met you, Juan. And right. uh, hopefully catch up again soon. And uh, send me the link and um, I'll upload it to onto the YouTube channel and bet you. And uh, take care and God bless you. And we're, 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 we'll beat this all together, Juan. I know we will. I'll send you the link right now as soon as we're done um, through email. Okay, mate. Thanks ever so much. Thanks, Juan. Cheers, mate. Bye. Happy New Year.